which is our regular church service. So we need everyone to do what they do if they are canon all at 10 uh, on next Saturday. That will be our Christmas Eve service. And then we will do the same thing on New Year's Eve. Um, you know, I'm a stickler for having, if, if, if Christmas falls on Sunday, bless God, we have church on Sunday. But this one time we will not because it's close, close. So another reason for us to not get so comfy here that we stop looking for a place because there's things that we can't do that we could do if we had our own place. Amen. So, oh, tonight my house, yes. Uh, we're in Psalms, 6 o'clock, and we're just soaking in Psalms, and, and so we invite you to come. Um, is there something else I was going to tell you, but maybe it'll come to me that I wanted to tell you about. But let's get on with the message, and it'll, it'll, it'll come to me. Something I was going to announce. Uh, faith for miracles. So we're going to build our faith up today. And we're going to have a miracle service after today. But then next uh, Saturday, and we're going to have a, a real powerful miracle service. Amen. And Christmas, we should always have a miracle service. And as I began preparation for this uh, last night, God began to deal with me. And I had already told you we were going to preach on faith for miracles. But he began, began to direct, direct me to his calling, to his people, to the secrets of the counsel of God, and calling his people into that place right now. It's a time of separation. It's a time of replacement. <coughs> Many people that we know right now, they're dying just like that, no warning, unexpected, <laughs> suddenly. Uh, suddenlies are going on, but it seems to be a suddenly of people being taken to heaven. So I want to say to you during this Christmas season, are you ready if your time is, to, is today? <coughs> Ryan High School, Sunday afternoon, he's taking a walk. Uh, Dusty Kemp, he preached that morning. I think he preached that evening. I'm not sure of the timeline there. He came home, went upstairs, laid down, I think, came downstairs, sat down in his chair, and went to heaven. Of course, that's the way to go. Amen. But I asked my church, are you ready? Are you ready? If your time comes in the next 30 minutes because that seems to be the way the Spirit of God is moving right now. Yes. Well, we all like breathing this air down here. I like this air. I like this atmosphere of earth. But we've all got to be ready to go whenever God calls us to heaven. So the Lord began to deal with me about taking people into the secrets of the counsel of God. Miracles are part of the ascended life in Christ Jesus. Miracles should be an everyday part of our life. Heaven's law is the law of faith. But it's the law of righteousness and it's the law of Jesus Christ. When Peter and John were arrested, <coughs> excuse me, for healing a man in the name of Jesus <coughs> in the temple area, they were taken before the chief priest and put on trial. The healed man was present and the living testimony of the power and the goodness of the work that was performed, the work of miracles. They were working miracles. The hands of the Sanhedrin were tied by the evidence of the healed man. If you have a miracle in your midst, it's hard to deny the miracle. We had a miracle in our presidential election. Mm -hmm. uh, the false prophets even admitted it was a miracle until they got hold of themselves and then they began to try to explain it away and <coughs> push it away. But you can't fight God. Mm -hmm. Everyone who has fought against this election has ended up uh, just totally wiped out. <coughs> just like this last thing that came up. Of course, we should pray for tomorrow, but those who have withstood this are going to be in trouble with God. When God's hand moves, 
don't move against him, even if you don't agree with him. Okay? Best thing to get into agreement with him. But the hands of the Sanhedrin were tied. And Peter, as the Word of God says, was being empowered by the Holy Spirit, addressed a prayer to the Sovereign Lord. Acts 4.29 Now, Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant unto your servant that with all boldness they may speak your word. Threatenings are going on over your nation. Threatenings are going on over your life. There are those who would intimidate you and threaten you, whether you're being attacked in your body with pain, whether you're being attacked in your finances, whether you're being attacked in your family, whether our nations are being attacked. Behold their threatenings. And grant your servants that with all boldness we may speak your word by stretching forth your hand to heal. And that sign, and that word there for sign, is the same word used for miracles. And wonders, and may be done by the name of your holy child, Christ Jesus. As we sang this morning, and we brought, and we worshipped, and we brought to uh, our worship to the holy child, Christ Jesus, even in our songs. There are those who would say, well, Jesus is not a baby anymore. He's a king. Yes, he is. But when Peter and John prayed in the holy name of the child Jesus, this is how they prayed. They already knew that Christ was ascended, Christ was seated in heaven, that he was ruling and reigning. They knew that. But when they prayed this prayer, they prayed in the holy, in the name of the holy child Jesus. And when they prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they spoke the Word of God with boldness. At the mention of the name of this holy child, there was a renewed manifestation of the power among believers. The prayer was answered here and in succeeding pages of the story in the book of Acts. So every Christmas, every Christmas, we come to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. But there's power in the name of the holy child, Jesus Christ. Amen. Just as there's power in the name of Jesus, just as there's power in Jesus, our King and our Lord, there is power in the holy name of Jesus. <coughs> Peter and John knew he had ascended. They knew him as the man but when they said, in the name of the Holy Child, Jesus, miracles came forth. And then when the angel of the Lord visited the shepherds, telling them of the birth of the Christ child, the angels declared his birth was a miracle. <clears throat> Luke 2.12 This shall be a sign, and it's the same word, Savion, which means miracles, unto you. This shall be a miracle unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger. Our Lord Jesus was conceived by a miracle. He was prophesied by the prophets through miraculous gift of prophecy. His birth was declared by angels to be a miracle and that he would become a miracle to the shepherds. He shall be a miracle unto you. He shall be a samion unto you. He shall be a sign unto you. So he was declared to be a miracle to the shepherds. His ministry was announced and confirmed by miracles. His resurrection was a miracle. That your salvation is a miracle. Yes. Amen. The baptism of the Holy Spirit and His presence in your life is a miracle. Yes, God. And all of the gifts of the Holy Spirit are operated through miracles. Yes. And they're miraculous, supernatural intervention of God through your life into the world around you through the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And they are yours. 
<coughs> with the miracle of our salvation and being born again, we are in union with Jesus Christ. Once we receive and believe, receive and believe, there are Christians that I talk to, they know they were saved, but they can't quite get it through their head that God really forgave all their sins. And that He is really able to deliver them from all their sins and that they don't have to constantly be in the woodshed because of their sins. There are Christians that I talk to that have not comprehended that when God forgave your sins, He also forgot your sins. Now, your enemies and your family may not forget it. They may even bring it up to you. But they're, not, they, they're under the blood of Jesus. And every time you sin, as your soul is being perfected, coming to the end of your faith, and God is healing your soul in the process of this journey, as your soul is getting to that realm of no more pain, never crying again, and God will bring you into that realm on this earth. As you're going there, God is doing a miracle in your life to prepare you for the reason that you were born. Amen. Amen. Now, if we got there overnight, we'd be so puffed up, we'd think we were God. Amen. <laughs> but we have to receive and believe. Receive and believe. Christ could die for you and I can tell you that Jesus Christ died for you and, and that uh, He has a plan for your life and He has a purpose for your life and you have destiny and you have gifts and you have calling. But if you don't believe me, you're not going to get it. When we come into that place where we believe Him, we receive a new perspective. Peter and John were in union with Jesus and they had a new perspective that day. They have a totally different perspective than those chief priests. Those chief priests were still over, over there under the law of Moses. They were still over there under the Old Covenant, under the Old Testament. But Peter and John had come into union with Jesus Christ. They had been with them, and they had a new perspective. They had God's point of view. His outlook. His standpoint and his angle. How many times have you tried to convince God of your angle? <laughs> uh, how you figured things out. His ways are above our ways and His ways are past understanding. Get into communion with Him in the realm of heaven. Uh, sit in the counsel of God. Uh, sit in the counsel of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Uh, get their perspective. Uh, because He has a plan for you. Uh, and before you were born, uh, you became part of His plan throughout all eternity. Uh, and as you sit in His counsel, uh, all of the troubles that you have today shall be no more. Uh, because you're going to be sitting in the counsel of God. Uh, and all that God planned for you, uh, you will become part of the miracle. Uh, you will become the more part of the miracle of the Holy Child, Jesus Christ. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The real word impacts men and women. Lifting them into new dimensions. They see things they've never understood before. They have a new understanding of themselves and their roles in His ultimate purpose and how that purpose unfolds. We adjust our world view to line up with the Word of God. Look at all those crazy world views out there. But in this church, we preach the kingdom of God. Amen. And if your world view doesn't line up with the kingdom of God, let me tell you, that's the only world view that's going to stand. That is the only rock that is going to stand throughout eternity Amen. is God's world view. Amen. Amen. So whatever opinion you have, go ahead and give it. Um, but I want my conversation and I want my thinking and I want my doing to be in the council of heaven. Our citizenry, all our rights and privileges are in the heavens. 
They're already there. You're, we're supposed to be seated in heavenly places. The Lord has, has, has an authority for you in the heavens. Our citizenry is in the kingdom of God. You don't have to wait until tomorrow to walk in this. Amen. The prophetic anointing, the word of faith, and the working of miracles enables those who are with Christ, with Christ in, in heavenly places. Oh, church, we've got to come into what God... That's going to be a victorious church come forth. 2017, you're going to see an overturning. God has brought us through. We're kind of always like how we have been. Uh, Mickey Winburn, who we were talking about, sang the song, <coughs> I Hear, which is a lovely song. At the funeral, Mickey Winburn would reach over and whisper to me, and she says, you know what it is to be a pioneer. Yet God has kind of always sent me... And so Eastgate went through a transition. But in 2017, there are many who are going to be coming through many transitions. You've already got the victory. Amen. You say, yeah, it was me. Yeah, yeah you. <laughs> you're, still, you're still following after the Lord. You're still surviving. Amen. So you prophesy according to your faith. We operate in all the gifts of the Holy Spirit according to our faith. And when the Sanhedrin saw the boldness of Peter and John, they perceived they were unlearned and ignorant men. Mm -hmm. They marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. They had been with Jesus. Okay, they knew because these Guys had been with Jesus that they were operating in the miraculous. But they still did not believe in Jesus. Nor did they get his part. Unlearned and ignorant men. As we go into 2017, we are going to begin to see people come out of obscurity. People who are unknown. People who God has been forming in obscurity, who's put some of you in caves, you think. And God has put you in places where you have been isolated and alone. And God's going to begin to pull some of these people out, and we've never heard of them. And He's going to begin to use them in 2017 because their heart is toward God. Yes. Their heart is toward God. So during these days that are ahead, with all that's going on in your life and all that you know about Jesus Christ and all the knowledge that you have of Him and all the ways that you serve Him, make sure that you're sitting in His counsel yes. and that your whole heart is toward Him. And these are the ones that God is going to begin to bring forward and use in the days that are ahead. Yes. The Sanhedrin perceived they were unlearned and ignorant men. Mm -hmm. And they marveled. And they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. <coughs> they had been with Jesus. So what is a miracle? I looked it up in uh, Wikipedia. <coughs> An effect or extraordinary event in the physical world that surpasses all known or natural powers and is ascribed to a supernatural cause. Such an effect or event manifesting are considered a work of God, a wonder, and a marvel. I've been blessed in my life to see God move many, many times in miraculous ways. I've seen Him change circumstances. I've seen Him move in healing. I've seen him move in incredible miracles that I knew it was the supernatural hand of God. And the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit falls into three categories. Larry and I were having this discussion this week, and so I'm adding bits in um, about all the gifts of the Holy Spirit. There is a speaking ministry, which is diverse kinds of tongues, interpretation of tongues, and prophecy. There is the knowing ministry, word of knowledge, word of wisdom, discerning of spirits. 
Now, don't believe anyone who tells you that you can't have all these gifts and operate in them. Amen. You can operate. There are teachings out there that says you can't have them all. Okay, Paul, the Apostle Paul had them. I got it. I got it written down. The Apostle Paul had all of them, okay? And God can, if, if you have the Holy Spirit in you, and you're moving under the power of the Holy Spirit, God can use you in any one of His gifts that He wants to use you in at any given time when He needs you. All He needs you to be is available and have faith to use the gift. Amen. That's right. Okay, and then there's the doing ministry, which is what we're talking about today. These power or action gifts enable us to act, do the works, and act like God. And their faith. Or number one is faith. The God-given ability to believe God for the impossible. Working of mir miracles. The God-given ability to perform the impossible. And gifts of healing. The God-given ability to impart healing for the physical body <coughs> at certain specific times. Working of miracles is most often manifest through the office of the apostle, prophet, and evangelist. But it doesn't have to be. <laughs> God can use whoever he wants to. It's also a separate body ministry described in 1 Corinthians 12, 29 as workers of miracles. We are to have in the body of Christ uh, people that we're, we're to have apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists in the body of Christ. But we're also to have active in the body of Christ workers of miracles. Now we need this restored back to the body. Yes. But in order for this to begin to operate in this office, faith has to come forth where that we believe that God still is moving in miracles today and supernatural manifestations among us. We're told to earnestly desire this gift and to not neglect the gift. We've been in so much warfare the last three years, but I, I do. I come back and I preach faith, and I come back and I preach gift of miracles. I come back and teach about prophecy. It can be imparted by grace through prophecy and laying on hands. The evangelist is the gatherer of the fivefold ministry, and working miracles gathers the people, raises their faith level, and then God meets them. If we had a notable miracle in this church on any given Sunday morning, the next Sunday morning we would have double. That's right. Amen. Amen. Okay. Because they will come for their miracles. But after the miracle is gone, just like the crowd that Jesus fed, the 5,000 and he healed the sick, yes. that's the same crowd that nailed him to the cross. Yes. That's Amen. Right. Yes. Good word. Good point. Okay. <clears throat> Through the hands of the apostles, many signs, miracles, and wonders were done among the people. Believers were increasingly added to the Lord, multitudes of both men and women. But just because workers of miracles will not bring you into maturity where you're following wholly after the Lord, that doesn't mean that we, we don't allow it to move in the body of Christ. Okay? We still need workers of miracles to operate in the body of Christ. Amen. God intended it. God gave us that gift. He, Jesus gave us that gift through the Holy Ghost. It's supposed to operate in the body of Christ. And we're supposed to desire it and covet it. And we're supposed to believe God to put it for it to operate in the church. Amen. But we can say, we can just say, well, we'll just negate that. <laughs> we'll just leave that out of the, of the, of the Word of God. Word of some miracles. And we can't do that. No. no. We can't leave Word of some miracles out of, the body, out of the Word of God any more than we can leave, leave out all the sins that are listed in there. Amen. I'm blessed to have the gift of faith. I know I have this gift. I have always had it because it was a time when I was fearful. I have the faith to believe the Lord for anything written in His Word or which He speaks to me. Hebrews 11, 6. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. 
For he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Now, there's a teaching out there. You pray one time and then it's done. Well, that's good. I mean, you can, if you can get it done in one prayer, fine, go ahead. But my word says that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So it may take some diligence from you. Amen. <laughs> Amen. It's just up to you. And you go ahead and do whatever it is you do. <laughs> I'm all for it, okay? If you can pray one time and God doesn't your prayer, I'm for you. <laughs> if God calls you to be diligent, to diligently seek Him, I'm for you. <laughs> but a miracle is a free gift from God. It can't be earned, bought, or deserved. Now we think in the body of Christ, and I am one. I, I, my calling for this time and season in my life is to take the body of Christ and to lead them into maturity. Yes. God willing, let us go on to maturity. That might be the cry of my heart to the church. <laughs> God willing, and to lead us to that place of maturity where we're actually living in the realm of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Where where this is our this is where we are. We're, we're not living. A, in the confusion of the chaos of the earth. We're living in the realms of the Holy Spirit and God wants to take us there. Yes. But let me tell you, gift of miracles has nothing to do with your maturity. Amen. It saint or sinner will receive of this gift freely. Amen. Now I had trouble with this because I always had this mentality of doing better, being better, working better, getting better, and even as a child trying to be better. Perfect. Yeah, so God broke me at it. And uh, so, if you, cut, if you, I had a hard time to see it, people that I knew what their lives were like. Yes. <laughs> they were getting miracles. <coughs> they were getting miracles. So the gift of miracles, we can't make a judgment that because it's, it's, it's because it's a gift. Amen. Amen. And it comes it's a free gift. Mm-hmm. Just like your salvation. Did you do anything to deserve your salvation? No. No. God came and got you somewhere and saved you in spite of yourself. Thank you. Came and got you. That's a miracle. God came and got you somewhere and you were the middle of you doing something. Yes, ma'am. And He saved you. Yes. And when he moves in miracles, he does the same thing. He interjects himself into your life, and he does a miracle. Amen. Came and got you. I'm all for it. Church say amen. 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 I'm all for preaching what Jesus said. Amen. I I mean, Jesus went out and he did miracles, and and the apostles, they went out. And then they said, in the, in the holy name of the baby, of the holy baby Jesus, they did this miracle. I just want y'all to know I am for this. I'm not against it. Are you for it? Amen. God said it. It is written. Jesus did it and declared it. The apostles did it. And the glorious overcoming church that is coming forth is going to do greater works than this. I gotta move on here. Come on, take it up time. Right, that was good. That was good. Okay, can I talk about faith just for a minute? Faith is a spiritual force. God is the spirit. He is the faith God who is only pleased by faith. Faith is the absence of doubt, the opposite of fear. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, of power, and of love, and of sound mind. I just made a faith statement to you. I said, I believe the word of God that there are to be workers of miracles in our midst and that we are to have miracles in our life and healing in our life just as the apostles did and just as Jesus designed for us to have. That's a statement of faith. Um, it's a gift. It's present tense. 
Now that is perceptions of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The gift, an impartation of the Lord. It's a fruit. It grows. Therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. Faith speaks. But the righteous, which is by the righteousness which is by faith speaks. So when you have faith, you will speak the words of faith. Amen. Okay? You're not going to be murmuring and complaining. Amen. You're not going to be rehearsing all your problems. All right. You're not going to be going over and over and over and over and oh, you're not going to be standing before God Almighty Jesus. and rehearsing to Him all of your problems. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. All right. You're going to believe that He has an answer to your problem <coughs> and He can do it miraculously. Yes. That's what I believe. Amen. Amen. Praise God. That's beautiful. It's a good word, Pastor. Lord, help me preach this. Yes, he helping you. <laughs> we live by his faith. I am crucified with Christ, devil as I live, yet not I. But Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loves me and gave himself for me. Faith says that when we know something is from God, we can run straight forward into it. Amen. Amen. He that ministers to you the Spirit and works miracles among you is it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Hearing of faith. This is what makes gift of miracles so much fun. It takes away all struggling. And I, and I, you know, I was slow to come to it because I keep trying to help people uh, mature. And uh, working of miracles shows no preference <coughs> over the fruitful, fruitful, mature saint and immature baby Christian. Now, he may not let you get by with it all the time. There may be a place where he says, okay, now it's time to grow up. But we receive our salvation by faith. We receive Christ's righteousness by faith. I am righteous. I don't have to strive to be righteous. I don't have to work at being good like I used to. Amen. And fail and fail and fail in the Old Testament. They tried and tried and tried to be good and please good, but they never could. No, I am righteous. Amen. Why am I righteous? Because I am covered with the righteousness of, of Jesus Christ. Christ. He loves me anyway. Amen. Whether I whether what's inside that righteousness, he has it perfected. Hello. Receive the Holy Spirit by faith. You speak in tongues by faith. You think you got your gift of tongues and did the devil come to you and tell you that's not really tongues, you're just gibberish. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing he does. Mm -hmm. We obey the spoken word. We're led by the Holy Spirit by faith because the Holy Spirit is going to take you into places that you didn't know. Wait on that. Yeah. <laughs> oh my I've been goodness. going back and forth with a new car. I talked myself into it. I talked myself out of it. <laughs> you know, and, and, and you know, I'm, you know. So I left it up. Well, yesterday, when I walked out of the beauty shop, I said, I don't know where that Cadillac dealership is. Oh. But I'm going to go buy me a new car. Amen. That was when I was walking down there. I said, I'm going to go find that place. Well, i got to go find the address of where is their Cadillac dealership. And so I got to find that address. And by the time I got to my car, I didn't know where the address was. And then I went home to check the address. And by that time, it was too far in. And I thought, well, I don't have time to go buy me a new Cadillac today because i got to get my sermon ready. <laughs> <laughs> but I walked out there, I'm going to go buy me a Cadillac. <laughs> but I talked myself out of it. <laughs> Fake hit me or what? I don't know. That just came to me. 
เยาว But faith trusts in an unknown future. Count things that be not as though they were. We have the assurance of God's faithfulness. I can promise, even though you're unfaithful, God's still going to be faithful. Confidence in things to come. The life blood of the just. Shield of the Christian armor. The down payment of things desired. Our guarantee of answered prayer. Trust the Lord. Living by faith is not risky because it's based upon the Word of God. What do you have, to, as our president recently said, what do you have to lose? <laughs> what do you have to lose? If God says you can have a miracle, if God says that you can have whatever you ask of your faith believe Him for, I'm not talking about Cadillacs here. <laughs> that might have been a devil messing with me. <laughs> but if I'm talking about life. If you have the faith to believe God for your provision, for your healing, for your health, for your job, for your marriage, for your family, for the salvation of your loved ones, what do you got to lose? I'd say go for it. You can mess up this week and not lose this. Amen. <laughs> the eternal spirit guides and leads us into all truth. So as I was putting this together, I was talking about the counsel of God. <coughs> You're going to learn these things that faith is going to come to you and it comes from God. So have you heard the secret of God? It says in Job 15, 8. And in IV, IV, do you listen in on God's counsel? Or do you, are you counseling him? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus said that he only did what he saw the Father do mm -hmm. when he did his miracles. Job 29, 4 through 6. And I was in the days of my youth when the secret of God was upon my tabernacle. When the Almighty was yet with me, when my children were about me, and I was wa and I washed my steps with butter, and the rock, rock poured me out rivers of water. The secret of God was upon him. Do you sit down and talk things over with God? You know, there's a little commercial out there that this lady's talking to her husband about insurance. I think she says, "Honey, we need to have a talk," and he became defensive. <laughs> So something came up to me, it was yesterday, I guess, I was sitting there, and, and I just came out of house. I said, Jesus, we need to have a talk. <laughs> something I got in here that I need to get out of me. Do you sit down and talk with God? Mm -hmm. I tell him I need to have a talk with him. He's heard you talking. <laughs> Do you hear the secret of God from the tabernacle of your life? The secret of the Lord is with them that fear Him, and He will show them His covenant. Amen. Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but He reveals His secret unto the servants, servants, the prophets. And the Lord is moving upon the earth. God will begin to speak to the prophets, and they will all be in unison. Oh, it isn't like there's some super hotshot prophet out there that He's going to tell and not tell the others. He'll, he'll just come to them in different ways. That's ego talking. Real prophets live in the inner sanctuary. Bill said you're Sunday morning or Sunday night that he likes to stay in his cave. We all do. Prophets like to go into their cave and stay there. They want to stay in that place in the council of God. But he sends us out. And in that place we listen more than we speak. Do you get in the council of God and you just sit there and listen? Just sit there and listen. Let His Spirit come over you. When we speak, then we speak the words of Him who sent us. Nothing more, nothing less. Uh, you heard me say, Don used to tell me that when he asked me what time it was, he didn't want me to build him a clock. <laughs> uh, 
same thing with you. If somebody asks you something, just tell them what they ask, especially with your children. Yes. If your child asks you a question, somebody needs to hear this today, and it's a spiritual question or it's a big life question, regardless of the age of that child, from two to fifty, you just answer the question. You don't preach them sermon. Amen. That's a good word, Pastor. Amen. Amen. Just answer the question. I've learned the hard way. <laughs> Listen more than we speak. But our ascended life begins at our new birth when we're born again. Literally born from above. From that moment, every child of God is privileged by the blood of Jesus to boldly enter the holiest of all. You don't have to be a prophet. You can sit down and you can talk to God and you can ask Him to speak to you and He will. His grace permits the youngest Christian to go in, sit down in His divine presence, be still, and then listen to God talk to Himself. The grandest truth of the new covenant in his blood is the red veil. Now you can hear his voice in your spirit. His door is open. He tore the curtain. Come in and sit down together with God. Your ears are about to hear privileged information. He will take you into courtrooms. He will take you into government offices. He will take you into sanctuaries. This high calling, this ascended life is not deep and mysterious. It's not a spiritual never never land. In this place we can meet with God. This ascended life is the life of hearing His voice, being in His presence, and living in His glory. In that realm, miracles become part of our everyday life. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit sit in secret counsel. Have you ever heard them talk to themselves about you? Have you ever heard heaven talk about you? I have. I have heard them talking about me. You're the apple in their eye. You're on their mind all the time. Within the inner circle of himself, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, God took counsel with himself about you before you were born. The Godhead deliberated and consulted together concerning your destiny. It's no accident that you were saved. Amen. It was a miracle. Mm -hmm. Their purpose will has predetermined the greatness of our life. Do you have any idea what they talked about? Have you heard that secret? Now because of Jesus' blood, we can go right into the planning chamber. The secret of the ascended life is our union with Jesus Christ, who is our life. It is no longer I that live, but Christ who lives within. Are you bored? Don't know what to do with your time? I know why. You have never heard his secret. Mm -hmm. His plan and envisioned purpose for his glorious church. Everything that I do and think is about bringing forth this glorious church. Do whatever my tiny little part is to bring forth this glorious church. This overcoming church this powerful, victorious, overcoming church is going to march across this land and bring in the harvest of God. The secret of the ascended life is consciously knowing that we are one with Him. Amen. And have the legal right to sit down with Him in His private council. Amen. Have you been going around worrying, fretting, fussing, complaining, let me tell you, in his secret counsel, you don't have time for all that. Amen. 
all you're going to hear about is the glorious plan that he has for your life. Now you said, but God, that wasn't my plan. <laughs> oh, he says, but it's mine. <laughs> I can tell you that whatever plan God has for your life, you couldn't even think it up. Amen. The impartation of his presence is that we give away. Why do we give gifts at Christmas time? He came, Jesus, God gave his, his holy child and they brought him gifts. When the wise men and the, when the Spirit came upon the wise men and they saw the star in the sky, they wanted to bring gifts. Yes. And what he places inside of us is that we want to share our gifts at Christmas time. All the uh, world out there, they make the money off of God. And this thing of giving gifts. But inside of us, we know that this gift giving is bigger than, than the gifts that they're trying to sell us. Yes. We... In His presence, we give away and share the gift that we are and the gift that we have. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. We delight. Do you love giving? Do you love to give? Yes. Yes. I love to give. Where does that come from? That comes from God. He has made us a gift and He has given us gifts. Amen. Every good and every perfect gift is from above. And come down from the Father of lights, with whom is no bearableness, neither shadow of turning. Amen. So the same God who set workers of miracles into the body of Christ has no shadow of turning. Amen. And has no bearableness. Amen. And the lack of faith are the doctrines of men, are the doctrines of devils, and people who teach another Jesus and another gospel. They can't water down that word and take it away from the body of Christ that God sent in his word that in his body there is to be workers of miracles. They can't steal your faith. They can't take it away from you. For by faith you will declare and say that in the word of God, God said. Amen. 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 God said. God. While I was doing it, I happened to hear come across this little song. Do you hear what I hear? Do you hear what I hear? We're seated in the council of God. We're going to hear what God hears. Feel the anointing on this, or maybe I'm just being touched. Said the night to the little lamb. Do you see what I see? Way up in the sky, little lamb. Do you see what I see? A star, a star, dancing in the night. With the tail as big as a kite. Said the little lamb to the shepherd boy. Do you hear what I hear? <laughs> Ringing through the sky, shepherd boy. Do you hear what I hear? A song, a song. High above the trees. And the boy can speak and see. Said the shepherd boy to the mighty king. Do you know what I know? In your palace warm, mighty king. Do you know what I know? child, a child, should be told. Let us bring him silver and gold. Send the king to the people everywhere. Listen to what I say. Pray for peace, people everywhere. Listen to what I say. The child, the child, sleeping. Spirit. He spoke to the shepherds. He spoke to the wise men. He's 
spoke to his creation is still speaking. No, bearer, no shadow of turning and no marrow woman. Same God, the same Holy Spirit that wrote this Bible and put in here that in the body of Christ there shall be workers of miracles. It's the same Holy Spirit that's alive today. The Lord is calling, I believe, during this Christmas season for a people who will sit in council. Say, do you hear what I hear? Do you hear what I hear? Do you hear the council of heaven? Can you hear the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit? Can you hear the Godhead speak? Can you hear what they have said and what they have written and who they are? And the miracles and the signs and the wonders that Christ Jesus did when he was on the earth and that he is still doing in heaven. Because now 